Well, the, Imagine if you found out that that's how they fund the UFO program. Well, that, you know, you know what I wonder about that because that Bob Lazar episode was very creepy when I when I uh, I watched the thing of yeah, you know, but to him talking about it, it was yeah. eerie to hear him talk about. It, it was it. very confusing because what he's saying is so out there. You yeah. don't know. I'm like, am I? A f I'm definitely a fool. But am I being a fool here? Yeah, no. That that's the little eerie part of it. But then, I was, who would control? Like, um, do you think the president gets to find out about it, or do you think it's purely supposedly Nixon knew, and Nixon took Jackie Gleason? Yeah, that I know. That, <laughs> that's and Jackie Gleason built a house out of the shape of the UFO that he saw, like to represent the UFO that he saw. And like the Jackie Gleason house was for sale just a few years ago. Mm. It's in like, what is it in like upstate New York? I found out about this from this dude who gave me uh, the book Best Evidence by David Lifton. He was like a, a guitarist in a band. That's it, that's the UFO inspired upstate New York house. Look at this huh? fucking house. So, Wait, that's not that big a house. Well, it, it wasn't that big a house because he wanted to make it like the fucking UFO. So what it was was oh, um, I see. I think, it's, I think it's multiple properties. Uh, oh, I see. So he just but started making UFO, like UFO houses. He apparently this is the, the <clears throat> rumor. What the rumor was was that Jackie Gleason got drunk with uh, Nixon, mm -hmm. and Nixon's like, "You want to see a fucking flying saucer?" Yeah. And he's like, "Yes." And then they flew to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. I believe right. was the rumor, and they showed him like we have actually like they had freezers of of them, right? They had them in I don't freezers. know if that's real. Oh. I, I've never heard anybody say that they saw a body and have it be like a hundred percent credible. Mm. Other than maybe that Travis Walton guy who claims to have been abducted in the 1970s. He's yeah. an, another one of those guys like, well, if he's telling the truth. Okay, there are a number of labs we passed through before entered a section. Nixon pointed out what he said was the wreckage of a flying saucer yeah. enclosed in several large cases. Next, we went to an inner chamber. There were six or eight what looked like glass-topped Coke freezers. Inside them were the mangled remains of what I took to be children. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the thing I remember from this story. So I, I'm, I'm conflating this with something else. So that's right. They did have fucking supposedly dead, frozen ones. The revelation of the U.S. secretary holding the corpses of dead aliens shook Gleason to the core, and he couldn't eat or sleep for weeks. After being confronted by his wife, Beverly, Gleason told her the truth about that night and swore her to secrecy, but Jackie and Beverly Gleason were already in the process of separating. The final straw in the relationship would be Beverly breaking her vow and revealing the encounter to the magazine Esquire in 1974 as a teaser for a book she was writing about her relationship mm -hmm. with the tempestuous, hard-drinking Jackie. Oh, the wife sold him down the I river. I wonder what that article... So that article was this where this story first came out? Yeah, I guess so. And stung and humiliated by the betrayal, Jackie stayed silent until 1986. Finally ready to talk, he invited Larry Warren, a flying saucer evangelist, author, and eyewitness to the Randall Sam... Oops. Fucking pop-ups. No, I don't want your pop-up. No, thanks. Thank you. Where were we? Uh, 86. Um, eyewitness to the Randall Sam Forest UFO incident to his New York home. After a few drinks, Gleason unloaded the whole unbelievable tale to an astonished Warren who spread the story amongst his community. However, the story would end there. Gleason died a year later, having only told his ex-wife and Warren about the once-in-a-lifetime adventure with Nixon. The tale would spread like wildfire with the advent of the internet confirming what UFO believers already knew. The government knows everything about aliens, but reveal it only to the privileged few. Huh. Okay, of course, because uh, this bec uh, because this is the blog of Skeptoid and not Believe Everything. Oh, this is Skeptoid oh. that wrote this. Uh, you read on the internoid. The story doesn't end there. In fact, there really is no story. The Richard Nixon, Jackie Gleason, Dead Alien Chronicle in a glass case tale now accepted part of UFO internet lore is based almost entirely on hearsay, coincidence, or an imagination, and not just the dead alien children in the glass part, case part. Wait a minute. Why do they say that? Uh, do, 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 Wait, do, was the Esquire magazine? What is their reasoning for saying that it's not true? They're saying it's anecdotal, which is obviously it's anecdotal. Scroll up a little bit more. Up to, yeah. 
So it says, as critical thinkers, we can't dismiss a story out of hand because it's preposterous, but we can dismiss a story if the facts don't fit together. Aha. So let's start with the established facts. Richard Nixon, Jackie Gleason, Beverly Gleason, and Larry Warren were all real people. Beverly and Jackie Gleason were really married, got divorced in 74, 75. Jackie and Richard Nixon are friends and played golf on a few occasions. Jackie was an enthusiast about paranormal topics with a huge collection of books on the subjects. Uh, Florida is a real place, Homestead Air Force Base, Esquire is a real magazine. That's about it. A uh, little investigation into Nixon's daily diary uh, reveals that Nixon was in Key Biscayne in February 19, 1973 for a meeting with the AFL-CIO. He spent less than 40 minutes speaking and glad-handing with guests at Gleason's annual golf tournament at the Inver uh, Inverie, Inverie? Inverie Golf and Country Club, which... Uh, at most 10 minutes available to chat with Gleason about UFOs. Nothing else in Nixon's diary indicates that the president did or didn't slip a Secret Service detail and go on an alien adventure with Ralph Cramden. But that doesn't mean he didn't do it. That just yeah, means right. he didn't write about it in his diary. Why would he write about that in his diary? Uh, where the story really starts to fall apart is Beverly Gleason's interview with Esquire because it doesn't appear to exist. Interesting. Yeah, that's the search of both Esquire's archives and internet in general turned up nothing. Hmm. What it did turn up, however, was an article supposedly written by Beverly from the National Enquirer, dated August sixteenth, in nineteen eighty-three. Discerning readers will note that the Esquire and the Enquirer have different thresholds for veracity and adjust their expectations accordingly. That's a very good sentence, right there. Yeah, it's very well, <laughs> well worded. Yeah. Uh, so it seems like there was no Esquire article, so that's bullshit. Yeah, the Inquirer back then, mm. I remember it being closer to Weekly World News than because Inquirer became like celebrity gossip entirely, right? When yeah. I was a kid, I remember it having wilder stuff in it. Okay, in short, the piece makes Jackie look like a lunatic, befitting a spurned wife writing a tell-all about her famous ex-husband, but the book wouldn't show Jack as he's never been seen before to anyone because Beverly never published it. The Gleason UFO story got picked up by a few other tabloids, but mostly faded into obscurity. So here's the thing, though. Um, you could for sure imagine that his ex-wife wanted to sell a book. Yeah. You could also for sure imagine that Jackie would try to stop that book from being sold. Yeah, right. So there's the there's that. Like maybe he bought her out. Maybe, you know, like how yeah. do we know that she didn't actually write a book? Now, that's also because Nixon didn't write about it in his diary. That doesn't, if, if Nixon's the fucking kind of guy who likes to get drunk and take people <laughs> to see UFOs, he's not going to be meticulous about every fucking thing yeah. he does all day long. And you don't think that they could hide that? I like that back then he was only like really open about recording his racist rants and not. <laughs> and not <laughs> But yeah. dude, back then, the fucking Lyndon Johnson used to take a shit in yeah. front of the reporters with the door open. So he could see how big his dick was? Well, he was just, like, he didn't give a fuck. And, like, he would have a conversation with yeah. a conversation like a with power move. But I gotta take a shit. 